we are only asking for what concerns us. We're only asking for what is going to benefit us. Knowledge that doesn't benefit us, it is Malayani. It becomes a curse to us and a burden to us, and we will fail. And we're asking for that good knowledge to be sent to us. Not for us, because we think we're so... Uh, how Chef and he used to say? Smarty, smarty, two babies. Yeah. Boston University, two babies, smart, smarty, as uh, smarty pants, something like that. Yeah. Because we think we're so smart, we figure things out by ourselves, without proper guidance that is given to us. Everyone is saying, oh, uh, yeah, Allah is, uh, they're just saying that. Because Allah's guidance is always through his representatives, it's never uh, directly like that, even the prophets, they have Hazrat Jibrail salam, showing that there is a protocol to knowledge, knowledge you cannot take directly. So, this protocol of knowledge, this is what made shaitan to become shaitan. This protocol of knowledge is what breaks so many people because they are going to measure the worth of that one whether it's the prophets or the awliya Allah especially the ahlil bayt they're going to measure that according to their eyes their eyes not the eyes of the awliya Allah not the eyes of the Ahlul Bayt, not the eyes of the Sahabi Kiram, not the eyes of the Prophet, not the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is one thing that in the Ramadan, for the fasting of humans, believers, we have to do. We have to fast with the eyes. Correct? It's not only to stay away from the wrong things to see, not just physically, other things also. But it is to start seeing the things you're supposed to see. People say, okay, you're reading the Quran. Yeah. But to see how you're supposed to see. Not with the eyes when your stomach is full and the ego is whispering and shaitan is whispering, ego is commanding in 24 hours. But when you're putting your ego down and you're connecting yourself and to see what Allah is going to make you to see how you're going to see. This is a marifat. This is a hidden knowledge. Because everyone is going to say, this is my opinion. Who cares what your opinion is? Islam is not according to opinion. Islam is according to haq. And that haq, for the blind man, he will deny 1,000 sons. But that is his opinion, that is his experience, that is not even his reality. That is his experience because he is blinding himself. If you start opening your eyes to see how Allah wants you to see, well, everything is going to crack open and you'll be able to see your past, your present and your future. You're going to see the here and the hereafter. You're going to see what happened to you before and what is going to happen to you. From pre-eternity to eternity, you're going to be able to see because you have put that will according to the will of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have put your eyes, your ears, your tongue. Step by step, Allah is saying, If you come to me with one step, I will come to you with ten steps. If you come to me running, walking, I will come to you running. My servant becomes beloved to me when he fulfills the obligations that I've put in him. But he draws closer to me when he starts to perform the things that is not obligation, meaning his heart will start moving. He doesn't need then that time for someone to say, do this, don't do this. His heart will know what he should do, what he should not do. This is the realm, this is the area of adab. This is the area of spirituality. You don't need proof. 
you know what is right and you know what is wrong. And Allah is saying, once my servant does that, I will be his eyes that he sees. That he sees with his ears, his tongue, his hands, his feet. What happens then? Allah is saying, I will make him lordly. That time, yes. That time, angels may come to circle around you. You'll be given responsibility. What responsibility? Responsibility and the power of the prophets. And what is the responsibility and the power of the prophets? What are they doing all that for? You think Hazrat Musa needs to split the sea for himself? You think Holy Prophet he needs to split the moon to prove to himself his power? Everything that they're doing, it is for the Ummat. First question, who is your Lord? First question, who is your Lord? Who are you serving? First thing we are taught, there is nothing that is worthy of worship. There is no ilah except for Allah. Who are we serving? So many, they serve themselves, their own ego. They say, I'm not going to be satisfied unless you give all this proof to me. Some, they're coming to me to understand spirituality that way. I'm being patient. After a while, I say, if you're still looking for that kind of proof, there's nothing that I'm going to say that is going to make you to be satisfied. Because it is not your spirit that is asking now. Because if it is your spirit, the spirit recognizes. If he sees a minaret, from afar he knows that there is a town. The spirit is subtle. If he sees something subtle, something that is small, it will understand the whole. It is the ego and it is shaitan that needs proof after proof after proof. Because he's saying, I must first use my logic. Adep, spirituality. It is a more sophisticated logic than that. You don't have to go through all of that to understand. So what is making people now to not understand? What is making people now, are you saying? The ummats that betrayed the prophets, the sheikhs who were betrayed by their murids. What is causing that? I was just remembering that Ilahi, Shah Fendi used to sing. And we will sit and we'll listen to that story one day. Didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you? The Shaykh knew the Murids, they're going to betray. He says, Watch out. No, I will never watch out. If you say no, never, there's a time when you have to be more careful. You have to say, yes, if you are concerned that I can be a betrayer, oh, may Allah save me from that, and you're watching your step. Step by step, you're watching, you are being careful. That time the shaykh doesn't have to say, do this, don't do this. People don't have to say, you know by yourself. If anything, your adept, your manners will say, this is wrong. This is just wrong. I should, I should have better control over myself. I should not be doing this. The shaykh is saying to the murid, one day you're going to hang me. It's true. It's a long story. Finally it happened. The shaykh looked and said, you remember? We need to be reminded, nobody betrays each other for Jannat. No one. The betrayal is always for this dunya and for the ego and for shaitan. It's never for Jannah. When you are uh, in a war, in conflict with each other, based on ijtihad for haq, that is different. That is not for what is the power and what is the material that you're going to get. 
the world that you're going to get. You're saying this is for Haq. And that permission is not given to everyone too. That permission is not given to everyone. That permission, time to time, only the top level ones, they're able to say. Yes, the top level ones, their words, their ishtihad, even their opinions is not like ours. First you have to say, who am I? I belong to that table or no? Do you understand? Do I belong to that table to even say something? No. Who cares what you say? You are belonging to that table, you have to say. Because that table is going to say, that majlis is going to say, you have to open, you have to open, you have to, we have to take the best. As Shaykh Afandi was saying, when, street, when lions they fight, the street dogs, they don't interfere. These days everyone thinks they're lions. This is the problem. This is exactly what Shaytan, he thinks he is a lion. So many people, if I say you're a lion, aslanum, oh, they get very happy. I say you're a donkey, they get very upset. But a donkey is more useful than a lion. Lion is just going around, attacking things. A donkey is carrying heavy loads. Not for itself, for others. So now we're moving on to spirituality. Because all these diseases that's going to destroy you, it is coming from the sicknesses of your spirit. Sicknesses that is inside. Outside, easy. You can be forgiven. Outside, easy, because of the weakness. But when a man doesn't understand his weakness, if he thinks that his disobedience, his betrayal is coming from his strength, that he is right, that time you need the hellfire for him to wake up, to clean him. So many will insist. That's why they're being sent. We're saying this over and over again. Take lesson from shaitan. Don't think that we can escape from what he had experienced. Take lesson from it. Shaitan is just judging Adam alayhi salam through these eyes. And he's judging the form of Adam alayhi salam. Which means shaitan doesn't know your spirituality. He doesn't. But from what little he knows, he is very threatened, he's very afraid. Because our spirituality, the spirituality of what? Bani Adam will make him to make sajda to. What makes people now to betray? When they start seeing that everything is equal, I and that one, the student and the teacher, is equal. Then you start saying, well, since we're equal, I would do this this way. Then you start questioning, why is doing it that way? I know better. You're a student, you're not a teacher. Now what happens? Very soon you're going to say, this one, he's not a teacher, he's a fake, he's there to destroy us. He's there to harm, he's evil. He's evil. It will come to that point. And that is how they can murder the grandchildren of the Prophet that is how they can murder the Sahabi Kiram, they can murder the Awliya Allah, that one can hang his shaykh. Because he really thinks his shaykh is evil, you understand? Which means that suddenly when you open that door to shaitan, it overtakes you. If you're not getting help, if you don't understand what is this fitna that is happening, it will overtake you. Not only are you going to disagree, you will actually say that one is evil, I must finish him off. I must finish him off. There's nothing good in him. So many people think that of me. Some they think I'm evil. 
I'm leading people to evil. I say, Alhamdulillah, because you say the same thing about our shaykh too. That he is evil, that the zikr is a zikr of shaitan. And that our association is evil and we're running top speed uh, to get all these powers for the evil. And I'm saying, you are talking about yourself because you're running top speed to find out all those powers from this one and that one and this world and that world. In our jama, we cannot even say what it is. We say taifa. <laughs> we cannot even say what. We cannot talk about those things. But they are convinced now. Just as billions of people, they are convinced that the Holy Prophet, alayhi sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he is evil. Yeah, astaghfirullah, hasha. You understand? Evil. And all Muslims are evil. So you become, you don't become human. You don't have any divine characteristic in you. None. When you start thinking that way. We are asking Allah to protect us from that kind of thinking. We must know what is haq and what is batil, right and what is wrong. It is not up to us, it is not up to society, it is not because 50 years ago they said no, today they say yes, we have to follow them. It is what Allah and His Prophet has al always said 1400 years ago and 7000 years ago, always. We are holding on to that, even if the whole world says you are wrong, who cares? We are not here for the world to understand us and to like us. We are here for Allah to like us. So, doubt. Don't let it to fall. If it's falling there, look at it, take it out, look for an answer. Because once you put that, those are the seeds it will start sprouting. Then when you decide to open your mouth, maybe that time is already a huge tree with roots that is deep inside. Then it's going to be very difficult to pull everything out. You're going to cry a lot or you say, no, I'm not going to. It is too deep. Yes, Shev, and you were saying, get rid of these doubts. Get rid of this uncertainty. Because all that we want from our faith is yakin, certainty. Certainty, you have to deal with these doubts. You have questions, ask. We have the answers we give. It is normal, maybe, to ask questions. It is not normal now to start doubting that one that you have given the initiation to. You may ask. Asking is different, doubt is different. Allah may inspire the angels to ask. It is not in their nature to ask angels. Angels don't ask. But Allah may inspire them to ask, but they never doubt. Shaitan, he doubted Allah's judgment. Just by one word, he doubted Allah's judgment. And that was enough for him to be suffering that time, now and forever. Inshallah, may Allah forgive us and in this month of Ramadan to make us to look for our sicknesses and to ask help for that. Amen. Not just to sit and make zikr and feel good because you're worshipping, but to look inside at all these doubts, all these weaknesses, all the wrong things, wrong thinkings, and to ask for help and to ask for forgiveness. That way, inshallah, Allah's promise always comes true. May Allah forgive me and bless you, inshallah, for the sake of the Holy Prophet, Lisa, to Assalam, Sultan Awliya and Sahib al Saif, Al Fatiha. Amin. Assalamu